You know, we give our children complete latitude to choose when they're green. And Asian Australians and Asian Americans are highly prescribed in the latitude they give their children. And yet when they're age 21, after they've developed their capabilities, the choices open to them after that are extremely wide. When they're armed with a university education, all of a sudden they go from having choices like this to choices like that. And those of us who gave our 11 year olds latitudes like this in their development find that when they're 21, their choices are like this. Strong social and cultural norms within a community support individuals and the group as a whole to make good. The second part of our metaphor concerned the infrastructure underpinning the stairs. The investments in opportunities that society makes to support members. Access to health, education, infrastructure and so on. Access to opportunity. That hidden infrastructure that enables people to climb stairs is an important part of progress. And you know, when we considered this metaphor, we found a lot of common ground with the views of conservatives when it came to the foundations. But of course, when it came to the infrastructure underpinning the stairs, the Social Democrats had a strong resonance with what we were saying. I suppose where we differed with the Social Democrats was in relation to the relationship between that hidden infrastructure and the third dimension of the stairs. That third dimension involves the alignment of the stairs, the rational alignment of the stairs. People climb stairs for good reasons. They can see incentives further up the stairs. And people choose to improve their lives because they are animated by incentives. And this is where liberal philosophy came in. That the power of choice and individual self-interest was ultimately the power for good. The other thing that our metaphor told us is that individuals climb stairs, real human beings, at the end of the day, are the ones who climb the stairs of social progress. There is no such thing as entire communities climbing together for a better life. It doesn't work like that. Social progress is, in fact, the sum total of a whole lot of individual progress. Individuals are animated to clutch their children to them and start improving their lives. And when you add up all of those individuals, then individual progress makes social progress. And when you have social progress, you have social justice. That's the meaning of social justice. And the Social Democrats have it wrong when they harbour some kind of vague notion that social justice is about government inventing a giant forklift to stick into entire populations and lift them to a better life. And it struck me how it was that I myself harbored that vague notion. The idea that there was a diesel engine sitting at the back of the warehouse and all we needed was a suitably sympathetic political leader to fire up that engine and stick that forklift under our people and lift us to a better life. I harboured that vague notion. And I was all for social justice, not entirely understanding 
what it might mean and how it might work. Social Democrats still harbour this vague notion that somehow the vehicles of the state can be, can be mobilised to secure social advancement. When in fact the Liberals are correct when they say that people climbing in their own self-interest ultimately adds up to social progress and ultimately equals social justice. So if we want progress, we have to motivate and mobilise and animate the self-interest of the most parlous people. We've got to find the spark within the breast of the most poverty-stricken mother and say to her, if you want a better life for your child, then you have to climb a few modest steps on their behalf. And here, there are opportunities on this stair if you do so. <clears throat> the problem with advantaged people in Australia is that we think that by empathy and compassion alone, through our altruism, we can mandate a fairer prospect for the disadvantaged. So we think that the salvation of the disadvantaged lies in our altruism lies in our other regard, to use Prime Minister Kevin Rudd's analysis of Adam Smith's original treatise. <coughs> yes, we are more than self-regarding creatures. We do have other regard for other members of our community, and the environment, and so on. But the problem about thinking about disadvantaged and how they might gain a fairer place in the world is that we end up assuming that they're going to be saved by our other regard rather than being saved by those things that saved us. It is our self-interest that has secured a future for our children. It is in our pursuit of our own self-interest that we've secured our own futures. And quite frankly, the interests of the disadvantaged will only be served by the same means. The disadvantaged have got to act in their own self-interest. And when it comes to indigenous peoples, this is almost heresy to say that Aboriginal people should be self-interested, that we should animate the desire for a better life in individuals. We assume that somehow Aboriginal peoples are unique examples of humans bereft of any self-interest. And it would be immoral for us to urge in them the same passions for themselves and their children that we clearly harbour. Self-interest, according to the Liberals, is the driving engine of progress. And to be self-interested is not to be greedy. It is not to say that there is no such thing as altruism and other regard, but it is to point to the honest truth. As David Hume once said many centuries ago, in truth, we never abandon our self-interest at any time. Every morning we wake up, we act in our own self-interest as the first act. Yes, we are capable of higher motivations and we're capable of higher aspirations, but never for a minute can we switch off our own self-interest. Which brings me to our struggle with environmentalists. <clears throat> 